you do for Christ is going to last. So as we talk about leadership, we talk about leading by example. You know, one of the things that I've observed, and I'm sure you all have as well, or at least some of you have, and that is we live in a society where titles make people. Titles. Now, I understand. I understand that there's a, a certain protocol that accompanies giving respect to the title. You may never like the person uh, in whom you serve under, and I've heard this said I, uh, in the military, you may, not, you may not care one bit about the person who's wearing the stripes, but you respect the stripes. So titles do matter, but titles don't make the leader. Even in our churches, you know, you know, we we you know we've we've got titles, you know, we 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 got chains around our necks, we 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 got collars that we wear, we 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 wear white habits, we you know, we are all the but none of those things make the leader because if the character of the individual is not consistent with the calling that goes with the title, amen, then it's in vain. Yet we have those that, that pursue titles, pursue positions, want the best seats, want the reserved seats. Amen. But we cannot follow after titles and positions. No, that's why I need you to just keep re re rehearsing this in your mind this morning. Amen. And just, just say it with me one more time. Say, lead by example. Lead by, by example, because it's in the example that you lead that's going to make the difference, not only in your life, but in the life of those who will follow you. Amen. I believe that every one of us, amen, would like to have somebody following us. We'd like to have somebody uh, 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 marking us, amen, for the Bible says they mark the perfect man, Amen. Mark, 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 the perfect, amen. So you've got, you've got to have some uh, uh, desire to have somebody follow you, somebody to, to, um, to mimic you, somebody to, uh, to, to imitate. As a matter of fact, I, I got on the, the, the bus yesterday just to, to greet those that were going away, and, and I got on, and I said, is everybody happy? And, and the missionary Yvonne Williams says, oh, you're trying, to imitate, you're trying to imitate Bishop? I said, no, I'm not trying to imitate Bishop. Matter of fact, I don't even have to imitate him, amen, because that was not fall too far from Drake. Amen. If I, if I hadn't cleaned myself up yesterday by mistake, by the way, but if I hadn't, you know, I'd probably look more like my daddy than my, myself. Amen. But no, all of us, amen, and, and, and it's a known fact that when we imitate others, amen, it's a compliment. So I'm sure that you would desire that somebody would compliment you by wanting to be like you. Oh my! See, because that's you know, it, you know, to have somebody to have somebody uh, to 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 to, uh, to come up to you, uh, Elder Tim, and and say, "You man, I've been watching you. I've been watching you. I've been watching you, and I just want to let you know how much I appreciate you because I learned so much from watching you." Amen. And every now and then, you get, you get that insight from somebody. You get that accolade from somebody that lets you know that they've been paying attention. You may not think anybody's watching, but people are watching you. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Somebody say, lead. By example. First Corinthians 10, verses 1 through 5. Thank you, Lord. Beginning at verse 1, it says, For I would not, brethren, have you ignorant that our fathers 
were all under the cloud, all passed through the sea, were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual food, did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of a spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. All, all were under the cloud. All passed through the sea. All were baptized unto Moses and in the cloud and in the sea. What we're talking about there is that when Israel came out of Egypt, amen, they, they had one mindset. That one mindset was that God was going to deliver them into a promised land. And so God, they all had the same experience. They all went through the Red Sea. They all, went, while they were in the wilderness, they all drank of that rock, that rock that followed them. When they were thirsty, there was a rock, amen, and that rock was Christ, and they dropped water from the rock, amen. God blessed them as they went together, all with one. They all had the same experience, which is a culture that, that I personally have been trying to cultivate here and that we would all be of one mind because I'm, everything that I read and scriptures lets me know that when there is oneness, when there's unity, amen, that God will show up. God does not, God does not visit confusion, but God visits unity. God comes in, amen, where there is oneness. And every time we see it, every time we see it, God is there. And so, and so in, in Corinthians, he's letting us know that they were all together under this cloud. They all went together under the, they all were together in the, they all drank. However, if we get, once we get down to verse five, it says, how be it with most of them, God was not well pleased. He was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. They were overthrown in the wilderness. There were, there were those that were in the wilderness, amen, that chose, amen, to murmur and to complain. And I want to show you something about these that will help us to, to better understand, amen, the, the, the scripture that we read in Timothy that when Paul writes to Timothy and he tells us, let no man despise that youth, but be an example of the believer. Amen, I... Um, uh, because I want you to, I want you to see, Amen. That that it's important. It's important for us to know and to understand that this word that we are supposedly living by, this word that we live by, has some has some thoughts in it, Amen. That I'm sure that every now and then we kind of just gloss over it. You know, we 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 kind of miss the mark, Amen. But I guarantee you, when we get it. When we get it and we come together with one mind that God is going to move in this place like never before. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Everybody wake up. Everybody wake up. Thank you, Lord. All right? So just do this for me. Go to, go to Numbers and let's look at what he's talking about. Go to Numbers chapter 14. Numbers 14, and we're going to begin at verse 20. Thank you, Lord. Numbers 14, beginning at verse 20. And Jehovah said, I have pardoned according to thy word, but in very deed as I live and as all the earth shall be filled with the glory of Jehovah, because all those men, all those men that have seen my glory, we're talking about all those who went through the sea, all those who were under the cloud, okay, all those who experienced the glory of God in that place, it says, because, but all those men that have seen my glory and my signs which I wrought in Egypt and in the wilderness, yet they have tempted me these ten times and have not hearkened to my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. 
neither shall any of them that despise me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. So now I, I want to just kind of, we're just going to take a, a slow walk through this here. Okay, so in, that tw- in, in those few first four verses, we see that the, the Lord is saying that those who, uh, those who I entrusted a very uh, special project to, a very special uh, uh, job to, these were the ones that they sent to spy out the land, to spy out the land before they went in. Okay, they went to spy out the land. But when they came back, some of them came back, most of them came back with a negative report, and they poisoned the multitude. But then he says, Caleb, on the other hand, a man had a dis- different response. Caleb's, re- Caleb's response was, we can do this. We can do this. We can, we can take uh, uh, this land. Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, so so, uh, um, so I'm going to read on a little bit further. Um, and Jehovah, I'm skipping down to verse 26. And Jehovah spake unto Moses, And Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation that murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As I live, saith Jehovah, surely as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your dead bodies shall fall in this wilderness. And all, listen to this, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward that have murmured against me, surely you shall not come into the land concerning which I swear that I would make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones that you said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which you have rejected. Look at this. He's saying, he's saying, all of you that are 20 years old and up, and up you're going to die because of your murmuring, because of your complaining. Be, he says, you're not going to go in, but, but you, here you are coming to me and, you're, and you're, you're complaining about my children, our children, amen, are going to be prey out here. And he said, well, so I'll tell you what. He said, you're going to die, but those that you are supposedly concerned with because of your disobedience, they're going to inherit that which you have rejected. So now when I'm reading this, I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. He's saying all the older generation those who are supposed to know the way, those who are supposed to be the examples. He says because of their their, their failure to walk upright before me and trust my word, they're not going to be able to enter in. Tell somebody, lead by example. Come on, don't get quiet on me. Don't get quiet. Amen. Lead. lead. Tell, you got to tell somebody to lead. By example. And look at what he said about Caleb. He said, Caleb had a different spirit among the people. You know, it's... Caleb had a different spirit. Matter of fact, go, go go to Numbers 13. Go back one chapter. Numbers 13, verse 30. So you can see the contrast between Caleb and the others. Numbers 13, verse 30 to 33. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses. And said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. He stilled the people. He, he let them. See, there was, a, there was, a, there was a, a discontentment 
among the people because some came with, with, uh, with different thoughts. Some came with different thoughts. Some came uh, with a defeatist attitude. Amen. And when you read the account and they say, well, you know, we look like grasshoppers in their eyes. Well, how do you know how you look in somebody else's eyes? Okay, so they, they were defeated from the moment, amen, that they, they came back, from the moment they saw them. And they saw all the people. They, they saw the, the massive fruits and, and how everything flourished. And it was, it was bigger than what they could imagine for themselves. And sometimes, you know, your blessing will look bigger, too big for you. Amen. But if God brings you to it, you got to know that he will bring you through it. Thank you, Lord. And so that Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had spied out unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to spy it out is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. Oh, my. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the Nephilim, Nephilim the sons of Anak, the giants, who come of the Nephilim. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So they were afraid, but God had already told them, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. But when they came back, they came back and they began to poison the minds of the other, of the multitude. Began to poison the minds of the other. So here, I need, I need to pause for a moment, and I need to let you know, amen, that, that as we... I said on last week, I said on last week and the week before that God is reinventing. He's reinventing us. God is raising us up. Amen. And he's raising us up. Amen. To take possession of what he has for us. But in the meantime, pay very close attention to what I'm getting ready to tell you. In the meantime, there will be influencers that will come from the outside. Amen. There will be those that will carry bones of contention. Amen. That will come to try to sow. Amen. But wait a minute. They're coming from the outside. See, it's easy from someone, amen, who's on the outside to come inside and say what they want to say and then go back outside again. They're not a part of who we are. Amen. But everybody's going to come with an opinion. Amen. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use Elder Tim as, uh, as an example right now. and I'm, I'm, He's a big man. I'm sure he can, he can take this. Amen. He and I, we, we've talked about it. Amen. Just case in point. We had, we had our dinner on last week. And, and so there, there, was, there was some that came to him and said that they didn't like the food. Okay. So I said, well, as, a, as, as an elder of the body, you handle that. Because guess what? As many people that came to you to say that they didn't like it, more came to me and said how great it was. So I can't react on the negative Okay, so, so I expect him as an elder of the house to say, okay, well, let's, let's pray about that. Everybody's not going to always be pleased. Okay, instead of, don't, don't bring it to me and say, you know, I got some bad news for you. No, it ain't bad news because everybody's got an opinion. Everybody has an opinion, but we need to stand strong as a body. Oh, see, somebody don't want to hear this today. Okay? But it's the truth anyhow. It's important for us to understand. Look at this. It's important for us to understand that if we're going to accomplish the task that is before us as a people, we've got to have the same mind. And I don't care who it is that comes in to try and change what you think or try to change, amen, the culture that exists here, 
you need to stand up and say, well, that's not the way it is. Amen. It's important. Amen. Why is it important? Because as long as we are double-minded in the house, God ain't got nothing to do with us. That's period, not dash. Okay? So, so when we look at the scripture here, look at this. So he says that, 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 that Caleb stood up and says, no, we can do this. But I'm letting you know, influencers, complainers, they will come, amen, but somebody in the house needs to stand up for the house. Amen. There might be some things in the house that ain't right, but guess what? We don't air our dirty laundry. And we don't air our dirty laundry even with those whom we think we can trust. If they're not in the house, they don't deserve to know. Amen. Now, ain't nobody said nothing to me, okay, about anything, okay? But I, I just feel a quiet hush over the... Over the <laughs> I feel a, there's a quiet spirit, amen. But, but hey, understand this, understand this. I have, one, I have one goal in mind, and my goal is that God will bless us as a people. And it seems like every time we get a step up, every time we get a step up, amen, the enemy tries to come in. But Satan... What Bishop would say? Get out of my business. Get out. Get out. Thank you, Lord. All right, let's read on a little bit more. First Corinthians. Let's go back to First Corinthians chapter 10. Okay, so we've 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 seen now we're in the beginning. He says that don't let anybody despise your youth. Be an example. Be an example, amen, because it's important for us and for each one of us to understand, amen, that we first have to have a relationship with God, amen, to know that the, the leading and the direction for our lives, amen, is not going to always, we can't always align ourselves with people, but we need to know that we can align ourselves with the word of God, all right? So we, we looked at that. We looked at uh, um, uh, how that God gave us the example of those that were in Israel, how that they all were under the same cloud. They all went through the same sea. They all went through the wilderness together. However, he was displeased with many of them. One version says with most of them, he was displeased. And everyone from the age of 20 years old and up, those whom you would expect to know the way, amen, those whom you would expect to do was right. Amen. He said how he was displeased with them. So now when we go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 again, but this time I want you to go um, this time I want you to go to verse 11 and look at what it says in verse 11. He says, now these things happened unto them. These things happened unto them by way of example. Everything we see in the Word of God, remember, the Word of God, God's Word, the breathed Word of God, is good for reproof, for correction, for, for righteousness. It's good for everything that we have need of as the people of God. And so he's letting us know, even here in verse 11, that these things, these things that we saw in Numbers, amen, verse chapter 14, 13 and 14, he said, these things that we've read, amen, they are there for our examples because God wants us to understand he's the same God. And guess what? Man is the same man. Man will always murmur and complain. But we've got to be like Caleb and have another spirit, amen, not a spirit of murmuring and complaining, but a, a spirit, amen, of, of righteousness, a spirit of hearing from God and following God and not being influenced or distracted, amen, by those that don't know what God is doing in your individual lives or within our body. 
all right? So he says, now these things happened unto them by way of example, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages are come. In other words, in other words, what was the one problem that existed in the wilderness was that it took too long. And when it looks like the blessing is taken too long, then we grow weary in our well-doing. Oh, my, my, my. If God was in it, he would make it happen sooner. If this was really God, why am I going through? Thank you, Lord. So, but he says, no, this is for your admonition. Look at that one more time. They were written for our admonition, for our encouragement, for our building up, for our uh, 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 sustainability. It were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages are come. See, that's why when we look at Hebrews 11 and we see the, 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 the patriarchs, amen, the halls of the faith, it said these did not receive the promise, but they held on to the promise. See, you got to hold on to the promise. You got to hold on to what you know to be true according to the word of God. And it doesn't matter how long it takes. And if you never are able to lay hold of it physically, you believe that at some point in time, amen, God is going to do what he said he's going to do, amen, and you will be able to live eternally in his presence. But if you can't hold on because you think it's taking too long, Thank you, Lord. And so he says, wherefore let him that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Oh, my, my, my. Don't think, don't think that you all that and you, you got it going on just because, amen, just because you wearing what you wear or you call what you call, amen. No, no, no. He said, when you think you stand, beware lest you fall. Amen. You don't have it all locked up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Last scripture I want to read for you. And if you have an opportunity, I really would like for you to, to, to just write these scriptures down and, and go back and study them. Study them, study them. Let it get into your heart. The last scripture is going back to 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy 4, 6 through 10. Look at this. He says, if you put the brethren in mind of these things, you shall be a good minister of Christ Jesus. If you put the brethren, so I'm, I'm fulfilling, amen, my role, amen. I want to be a good brother. I want to be a good minister, amen. So I'm putting us in remembrance of these things today. If thou put the brethren in in mind of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Christ Jesus, nourished in the words of the faith and of the good doctrine which thou hast followed until now. But look at this. Verse 7 is very, very, very key here. Okay, remember we talked about influencers. We talked about those who carry the bone. Amen. I, I can remember my father used to have a little saying, don't come to me telling me anything that anybody said, because if you can't tell me who said I don't want to hear it. He said, but if you tell me who said it, now I'm going to go back and tell them you said that you, they said it. Amen. Because that was a way to nip it in the bud. Amen. So don't come, don't come talking a whole lot, a whole lot. Okay. But the same person, the same person that'll bring a bone, will carry a bone. Thank you, Lord. So that, that, person, that person will go both ways. They'll come to you with some stuff, and then they'll go back to the other people. But amen. Just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. All right? Thank you, Lord. He says, but look at this. Verse 7 says, refuse to carry the bone. No, that's not what it says. Refuse. 
profane and old wise fables. Exercise thyself unto godliness. Refuse. Don't get involved in no foolish talking. Don't get involved in those conversations, amen, that tear down the people of God. Don't get involved in those because it's not profitable. It's not profitable. You poison your own soul by entertaining those conversations. Oh, my. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Godliness is, verse 8 says, for bodily exercise, so exercise profited for a little, but godliness is profitable for all things. Having promise of the life, oh God, look at this. The reason why, the reason why some of us will get involved, amen, hold on to your seats. The reason why some of us will, will get involved in, a, in, in, in conversations, amen, that are, that are unprofitable, gossip, okay, is because we're insecure. And we want to have relationship. But if you've got to sell your soul for a relationship, is it worth it? No, tell somebody, lead, lead. by example. By example. Say it again. Say, lead, lead. by example. By example. Thank you, Lord. Faithful is the saying and worthy of all acceptation. For th to this end we labor and strive because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of them that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example to them that believe in word in manner of life, in love, in faith, in purity. And here's the key. The last thing that I want to say to you is that when we do that, then we feel less than comfortable being involved in the other. When we are when we are diligent to live and to walk by faith, to have those conversations, amen, that, that, that edify the body, to have those conversations that encourage, that have those conversations. Oh, mom, you know what? It takes, it takes some strength, I believe, amen, but I believe that everyone has the will to be able to do it, amen. It takes some strength to stand up and say, you know what? I'm not listening to that. And you will earn more respect from those individuals when you, when you are able to stand up and say, I'm not receiving that. Saints, we've got a ways to go, but I believe that we're going to get there. But I don't want to see anybody die in the wilderness. And I don't believe Amen. That the Lord is going to hold up the blessing waiting for those who don't want to go to the promised land. I believe God today. And I'm asking that the Lord will bless us to be the overcomers that he has called us to be. I'm asking that the Lord will bless us to be victorious in this walk. Thank you, Lord. And we can be victorious because we already are. Thank you, Lord. Come on and give God some praise. Lead by example. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you right now, and we believe in 
we're trusting you today. God, in the name of Jesus, that you will continue to show yourself, oh Lord God, in this place. Mighty, mighty, mighty God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. God, move by your spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, we bind and rebuke the enemy that comes against us. Oh, God, that spirit that comes, oh, God, to throw stumbling blocks in our way. We rebuke it today in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, God, that you would give us that mind. Give us that hunger and that thirst, Lord. God, to pursue you, oh, Lord, with our whole hearts. Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help us, dear Lord. Help us to lead by example. Help us, O oh Lord God, Father, to, uh, to nurture, O oh God, the seed that has been sown, O oh God, and those who, uh, who are coming behind us, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Help us, Father, today, Lord God, to be a blessing and to raise up a generation of souls, O oh God, that love you with their whole heart, O oh God. But first, Lord God, give us that hunger and that thirst for your righteousness. Lord, don't allow us to become weary in our well-doing, God. Help us, Lord God. Father, to stand firm, oh Lord God. Yes, Lord. To fight, oh Lord God. To march, God, with that blood-stained banner, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we're believing you today, and we're trusting you right now. Let your glory be revealed, Father, in this place. And God, we give you praise honor and thanksgiving, Lord. It all belongs to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, if there be anyone among us today, oh Lord God, that does not know you, if there be anyone among us today, God, that is wavering in their faith, if there be anyone among us today, Lord God, sick or afflicted, God, we ask that you would touch, oh God, yes, Lord God, bring forth healing today. Save that soul, oh God. Oh, God, re renew that mind on today, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we believe in you for it. We're saying yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm asking that you all would remember uh, Deacon Antoine's mother. Amen. She's in the hospital, uh, so that's why he's not here. Amen. Um, and uh, we want to pray that God would, uh, would touch our body. Amen. It's about letting everyone know there is a God. The Bible says that the fool has said in